everybody. I'm here to do sort of uh, start a series, sort of a craft with me and a partial tutorial on making a sewing journal. I found this tin when I was clearing off my shelves and I thought wouldn't it be cool to make a journal that would fit inside of there, a sewing journal. So I, I, I'm I doing that. This is stuff I've got ready to go in it. Um, so I decided to do that. So what I did first, and I, I'm not going to show this part. I already did it. But I drew around cardboard. I drew around on cardboard this to get this shape. And I... There's glare there. And then I cut it out a little bit smaller than the tin and I made a template for the cover that would fit inside of there. And then I cut another piece of cardboard a little bit smaller so that would be the template for my pages. So it would fit inside the book without sticking out. And I cut I cut 20 of these I think that'll fit in here after it's been decorated, but if not, I can take it out because this is going to be a ring journal. So, um, I, you know, you can take pages out and in. So that, I made that as my template, and I tried to, oops, um, here, top front it says, I tried to mark what, what way was up so that uh, even if I was a little bit off in my shape, they would all match. And that's what I did. So I cut um, for the for the uh, um, cover. I cut three, and I don't know if you can see this, but I glued three of them together to make this thicker, so that this would be a nice sturdy cover. And then I covered it with fabric. But and for this one, I went around to the back, and this will be covered up with paper later. So I have a front and a back, and I'll be decorating on the front. <clears throat> I'm going to move this out of the way. And move this in. This is freezer paper. I use freezer paper. It's what the butchers use to wrap in so it doesn't get freezer burn. And um, that uh, keeps my desk clean. So after I cut out all of my cardboards, I decided that I wasn't going to be covering this edge. So I didn't want that edge to show from the side. So I took a waterproof marker and I just went around on the edge a black marker so that if you saw anything from the side, it would be black. And that's all I did is go around, made sure that it was all covered. So I did that to all of them but this one so I could show you. I hope you can see that. So I just kind of went around and made that, that edge black. Now, I'm putting things on the pages. I'm gluing things on the pages. And it's uh, going to, uh, if, if, well, I'm using like, uh, I'll just show you one that'll explain it. This one, I used lace on it. So the lace would show the cardboard through. So I glued paper onto this uh, piece so that the lace would then have a color behind it. So I'm going to show you how I did that. I used um, this this page. I'm going to use this, this doily. And of course you can see the gray through it. So I'm going to put this scrapbook paper under it so that it has that kind of yellow tinge under it. And then I'll use this paper 
on the opposite side when you open it up that will be those are all going to be paper so that you can I can you can write on them you know like in a regular journal and um, that will use the same papers when I open it up so I haven't put any of the back papers on yet but I have most of my other ones done I'll show you some more later uh, so this is what I did I used Grammy's keepsake is how she puts her covers on and uh, whoops sorry I was looking for this um, and that is that she uses a three-part glue one part water mixes it together it's just a white glue and then she uses a paintbrush and paints it on what she wants to cover she puts all her fabric uh, covers on like this so you take your paintbrush and you put this glue mixture on it cover it really good and then you can get your uh, paper and what I'm going to do is put it on the back of this, sorry for my arm, and I'm going to kind of line it up with the edge. And press it down. Now what I usually do is put this, let it dry like flat in a book so that it it's not uh, curved when I'm working with it. So I'm going to put this one aside and I have one that I glued previously. Now I will take this and from the back cardboard side I'm going to cut around the edge of the paper. This is what it, it looks like on the other side. <laughs> I've got ink on my hands. Of course, I was working on something else for, for a while ago. Okay, so I cut this as close to the edge as I can. Sometimes I don't get it as close as I like it, and then I just go back and fix it up while I'm doing this like this sticking out I'll just go back and fix that up I have to take I didn't get it quite to the edge so I'm gonna get that little bit off of there and then I'll go back and fix anything that's kind of sticking out sometimes I look at this side to see oh that's where I see one a part more sticking out and then I fix it all right so now I've got it covered with paper and then the next step is to put the doily or whatever on it on this one I'm going to use this is part of a tablecloth and I'm going to use this part right here Hopefully you can see it. It's got really pretty flowers on and some cutouts and all that. Somebody hand embroidered this. And it's just beautiful. But it's stained and it was, you know, not being used for anything else. So I thought I'm going to use it for journals. So when I've got um, that ready, now I'm not ironing this, even though it's a little bit wrinkled. If it was really bad, I would. But I, I'll show you it. You really don't need to. So make sure. And I will glue on here now. I'm going to do the same thing I did with the paper. And I'm going to put the glue all over it. Oops, got a little piece of paper scrap there. Don't want to get stain on 
on this. And then I'm going to lay this on it where I want it. Kind of want this to be near the side here. And I take um, an old credit card or whatever, and I just kind of put this to get all the bubbles and the wrinkles and everything out. At this point, I can still lift it up. I got a wrinkle in there. I didn't like that. So I will get rid of that. I'll straighten it out. Again, I'm going to let this dry inside of a book to flatten it down. And then I will go back and cut around the edge, just like I did the paper from the back. But I like it to be totally dry before I do that. Now, I didn't see this anywhere. I'm just making it up. I don't know if this is the best way to do it or not. But it's working for me, so I am, I've been real happy about how it's turning out. I'm going to show you some of the other, other things that I did. And like I said, I don't have the papers on the back yet because I'm going to match to what the actual thing is. So these are the ones that I finished. I have a couple more that I'm finishing up. Here's my back and my front cover and I'll be putting of course eyelets in here and decorating the cover up. So this one is uh, pink so something whatever I put if this is my first page I'll put something on the cover I'll probably use fabric on here but I'll, I'll put a nice color that matches to what I've got um, on the top one. So this one has paper under it and then a piece of lace. This one has paper and a piece of uh, fabric lace. It was kind of a, a big piece like what maybe you'd use in a dress or something. This one's fabric. I didn't put anything underneath it because I didn't need to. This is from a napkin that somebody had appliqued by hand and embroidered. Again, it was stained and so I'm cutting it up. I have paper on this one plus a piece of, I think it was a placemat or something doily. This one is something that was from a kitchen towel for Easter probably, but I just thought it was cute with the buttons. You can see that I, I uh, don't have the, um, uh, the backs on yet and I've got them cut out. Now when I cut these out I kind of took the paint, the glue with the paintbrush and I just kind of went over the edges like this. Now I wanted to keep them from fraying so I did that and I just let it dry. You could use fray check but I had this out and it was already uh, um, full of glue, so I just kind of went over the edges and did that. That way they won't fray. This one is an old tablecloth. And here was another napkin that was hand cross-stitched. Just love that one. Another piece of lace over paper. Paper with a piece of lace. Part of that old tablecloth, just a different part from where the red flowers were. This one I was so thin, this was a napkin, hand embroidered. 
I put paper underneath it so that you could see uh, you can see it through there but that way it, it's pretty it's not the cardboard behind it this is another one that I put a piece of paper and it was hand stitched this is like tool in here so it's it's uh, like that uh, this was a doily and I put it over paper so you because you could see through the cutout part another this looked like I think this one used to be on the arms of a chair um, what did they call those Adamascars or something it's over paper and this one I wasn't real happy with because it bled through but I'll cover it up with something it was from a towel that must have come from a hotel in 1939 and I could see the 1939 I thought that was cool I got too much glue on it down here so I'll just cover that up put a pocket or something down in that part or lace or some or a snippet or something uh, I still like the the rest of it so that's as far as I am so far and I showed you how I did the fabric and the only difference with the cover was I didn't cut it along the edge I cut it you know about a half inch out and then I put the glue on this side and just folded it around so that it would cover the edges and then like I said this will have paper put on it I left this a little bigger because even though I'll be putting paper on it that would uh, that's where the eyelets will be and so I thought well I'll just I'll just leave that a little bigger and make it stronger so that's as far as I've gotten so far and I will come back with the next step on another day. I hope you enjoyed watching. Thank you, and I'll see you again. Bye!